I live in Victoria and we had the, the two years of lockdown, sitting at home, pretty bored, twiddling my thumbs, and the next month there was a rolling chassis in my shed. I kind of half grew up on a farm and I always liked the outdoors and rode motorbikes and I rode mountain bikes semi-competitively and I guess I always sort of, you know, did, I really liked doing trips to the desert and always had to have a camping set up for it. So I sort of had a, a N70 Hilux, it was a little bit set up for camping, like a dual battery set up and, and that sort of stuff. And yeah, I guess it sort of, during lockdown, I was unable to ride ride bikes, and uh, I basically just decided to build a car in my shed. Yeah, I guess I've been I've been camping, but not so much the four wheel drive side of things. More like the the camping to go dirt biking or mountain biking side of things for like the last decade or so. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a completely new experience and a new world for me doing something like this. I've always loved design. Um, in, you know, in year 12, like I, or in my, in my final year at school, I built an air hockey table out of, out of timber and it's sort of, um, it's all snowballed from there. It, I did, I did a, a bachelor's of science and a master's of mechanical engineering. And my final year for that was, uh, building a, uh, a race car basically. I did integration in that and a lot of sheet metal, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of design and uh, I guess, yeah, we, we raced all the other unis in, in the country and ended up, you know, coming second, which was pretty cool. But I guess we learned a lot about manufacturing. I did a machining course and, and um, I learned to to TIG a little bit just on steel when uh, when we did the race car and I welded the chassis, it was a full space frame chassis. So we did j jig and, and welded that. And I guess that was probably where the majority of my fab experiences come from. I was pretty lucky when I did uni. I, um, I worked in a bike shop for uh, maybe like five years or something like that and just learned to use the hand tools. So I think a combination of those two things and and like having a pretty good woodwork teacher through um, through school is probably yeah that's how I've got to where I am and and learnt like a, a bit of my skills. But then I guess through this build I've I've learned a heap of new skills like tigging alley and and stuff like that. I've just put in the hours and yeah uh, I guess self taught off YouTube and like like a lot of other people and yeah that's that's probably probably about it. So I, I've got this car 3D scanned and I'm pretty handy using the 3D stuff, um, CAD, and I do a lot of laser cutting. A, a lot of that car is has been, yeah, all designed on my computer before we, before we built it. There is some stuff like tube work, I don't think it's worth my time on CAD, so I didn't do that, but all the sheet metal stuff in that car has been done on CAD and designed before it's been welded on, for sure, yes. A cool, I guess a cool aspect is you can do finite element analysis on a lot of it and just check your loads like with the tray mounts just you know estimate a load like 2,000 kilos on the back like is this thing gonna buckle if I jump it like so it's sort of yeah it's, it's good in that sense don't get me wrong I haven't done it for everything on that car just like some critical bits and absolutely I think uh, I'm a big believer in just testing stuff it's definitely slower if you're only doing it once but if you ever had to do a second car then it becomes much, much faster. So I, I've sort of got a few mates building these and I'm, you know, I guess supplying parts or helping them out with, with cat and laser cutting and CNC bending. And it's just so quick the second time because it takes all the thinking out of it. Like a good example is those tray mounts, like just getting the tray level. You know, it took me so much mucking around with a 3D scan and off the car. And, and then the second time, it's just all perfect. Drop on and weld it, and it's you know good to go. So yeah, I did the first trip in the high country, just a real shakedown. There were some massive dramas. I had the wrong diff ratios front to rear, like a 4-1 in the front, a 4-3 in the rear. Just cooked the whole drive line. So <laughs> and then basically bolted the thing back together, got a new drive line, rebuilt the diffs, and just punched it straight up to the cape after that. And um, 
yeah, we did the telly track and came back down via like Chili Beach and Cape Flattery and Fraser and saw a fair bit of it. Trips in the future, I don't know, I think, I, like I really enjoy the mission. Uh, like the remote touring stuff, the stuff that not a lot of people do. I think, um, yeah, it's sort of, it's pretty satisfying. So I think I'd love to, to do some remote touring. I don't, I don't want to like say too much and then not do it, but yeah, like, it, you know, I'd love to do the canning at some point in my life, the Madigan line and the Simpson. Um, and Bulgari, that sort of stuff. Yeah, nothing, nothing planned yet. I guess just on the back of this trip, just get back to Melbourne, fix up some niggling issues, and and uh, go from there. I think it was always going to be the Barra. Dollars per kilowatt. It's a pretty good choice. Um, they're, they're pretty cheap. A lot of aftermarket support, and yeah, that I mean, it was. It just fits in there quite well. Um, and as far as getting power out of them, not that the primary goal of this build is power, but getting power out of them is quite easy. And I'm not towing at all with this car. If I was towing, it might've been a different story. It's sort of more of just a fun car. So it's not, it's not too bad on fuel. I think like it, it's probably equivalent power to an LS, but better on fuel. And also the ZF six speed, the auto trans behind it is a really, really good thing. And that was one of the big reasons why I picked it. It's a really good six speed box and it's got full lock up in it. And the torque converter is really nice. And yeah, it, it drives really well off road. Yeah, if I was gonna do a diesel, like, you know, a Duramax or a Cummins would be so nice, but they're a lot more expensive. Um, the Barra is like a very, very budget sort of engine conversion, I think. Have you seen, there's one with a V12 in it. It's bloody, it? yeah, bloody crazy. That V12 Toyota in it, twin turbo. But yeah, I think the Barra is like, it's a pretty good fit. I've said a lot of people do LS builds just because of the sound, I think. But I, I really do think the Barra is a better overall package. Yeah. If you want to see more of a detailed walk around to the car, check out tomorrow's episode.